Hello, hello, my friends. Welcome to Bet Online All Access. I'm Ali Melendez. Well, there is some amazing football on tap for the coming weekend as we'll find out the who, what, and where of the NFL playoffs and crown a champion in college football. That's right, we're going to cover it all for you here today on All Access as we always do. So let's start it off with the college football championship playoff, shall we? It is the Horn Frogs of TCU and the defending national champion Georgia Bulldogs on Monday night. Now, who better to break it all down for us than our very own Drew Butler and Gabe Eichert. Welcome, fellas. Thanks so much, Allie. Drew Butler and Gabe Eichert here to preview the college football playoff national championship game coming up on Monday night against number three TCU and the number one ranked defending national champion, Georgia Bulldogs. That's right, Gabe. How about them dogs? But wait, I'm going to push the Georgia bias aside. I got a Big 12 expert in Gabe Eichert with me here, and we are going to break down this matchup that is sure to bring some fireworks. Right now, Georgia is a huge 13-point favorite, Gabe, and the over-under is set at 62.5 points. I am taking the points, Drew. Yeah. No offense to your dogs. It's just a lot of points, right? And I can't jump off the TCU train now. I know Georgia is the more talented team, but Michigan was the more talented team, and yeah. this TCU team just finds ways to win games. They've done it all season long uh, in year one for Sonny Dykes. And I just, I believe in Max Duggan. Uh, I believe in the player that he is and the leader that he is. Now I am concerned about the Kendra Miller knee injury. We'll see what his availability looks like for the game. But Amari Di Mercado did a fantastic job stepping in and filling that void for the Horn Frogs. The one really encouraging thing from the semifinal game for TCU was that they held up at the line of scrimmage. Yeah. I know a lot of points were scored, but that group battled at the line of scrimmage. I think they can do something similar to Georgia. I think they can keep this thing closer than some people think. So I'm putting my faith in Duggan and the Horn Frogs. I don't blame you. As a former offensive lineman heading into that matchup against Michigan, so much was made about the physicality of the Wolverines banging around in the lines of scrimmage, yet TCU made it happen. Do you think that gives them more confidence, or do they now know, hey, we can go win this game against Georgia? Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. There was probably a little doubt in those guys' mind, but to run the football the way that they did, especially in some of the situations where they absolutely had to have it, I think that's going to give that team a ton of confidence coming into this game. And Georgia's the most talented team in the country. Right? They're, they are. So you're about to see what you're made of in the national championship game if you're TCU. So there's no doubt. They're coming into this game with the most confidence they've had all season long. Yeah, the Dogs and the Frogs teeing it up inside SoFi Stadium on Monday night. Both of these teams won absolute thrillers in their semifinal matchups. And Stetson Bennett and Max Duggan, what two great stories these two quarterbacks are. Both just willing their teams to victory, regardless of the adversity they face. Quentin Johnson is going to have a big role to play. As you saw, Georgia allowed C.J. Stroud in that off Ohio State offensive passing attack to really take advantage of the secondary. But how do they do that, Gabe? By allowing C.J. Stroud to get outside the pocket. And guess who's more mobile than C.J. Stroud? Certainly Max Duggan. So I think Georgia is going to run their antennas up and understand they have a tall task at hand. TCU is not scared anymore. They have nothing to lose. And I really do like Max Duggan and Quentin Johnson as a quarterback. This offensive attack as it pertains to what Georgia's vulnerabilities are certainly shows that there could be a lot of points scored by the TCU Horn Frogs. But... I do think Georgia ultimately will be able to learn a lot from how they almost lost to Ohio State in the fashion in which that game was played in the Peach Bowl. How can they limit TCU putting up a ton of points? That is by limiting the amount of possessions that TCU has. I think Georgia will try to run the ball against that 3-3-5 scheme, which Michigan said they were going to do, but they started turning the ball over. TCU started scoring quick, and then Michigan had to adapt their offense. Here's where I'm at. 13 points is too many. TCU is 10-3-1 against the spread this season. It is a Cinderella story that you no longer can ignore in a national championship game. I just think that's too many points. I think the dogs win. I think the frogs cover. 
Georgia will be your first back-to-back -back national champions in the college football playoff era. You mentioned the Kendra Miller injury, running back for TCU. How will he progress throughout the week? Will he be available? What about Darnell Washington, the tight end for Georgia? Where will he be at on Monday night? Still a lot of question marks, but I think ultimately 13's too many. I will take the points, and I'll go under 62 and a half as well. Gabe, it's going to be an unbelievable matchup. Your Big 12's TCU Horn Frogs against my Georgia Bulldogs. Yeah, buddy, this one is going to be a lot of fun. Gabe Eichert, thanks so much for your expertise. I'm Drew Butler. Allie, we'll throw it back to you. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, guys. It'll be must-see TV for sure, and I cannot count the Horn Frogs out. I mean, what an amazing story. Well, Drew will be back with us in just a minute or so as we shift over to the NFL. But before we do, let's take a quick look at some other happenings in the Bet Online universe. Here we go. So almost lost in the excitement of the CFP and NFL playoff chase the past couple of weeks was that amazing performance by Luka Doncic. But not by our guys here at BetOnline. Mm -mm, I'm just saying, our guys don't miss anything. They're the best. Anyway, after becoming the only player in NBA history to score 60 or more points and tally a triple-double last week, Luka Doncic is now the MVP favorite. Now, on the other end of the spectrum is Mr. Unlimited over in Denver. Yeah, Russell Wilson, of course, looked, well, uh, you know, very limited in his less than stellar first season with the Broncos. But it seems that all's not lost for the former All-Pro quarterback. Our odds makers here at BetOnline have made Mr. Unlimited the favorite to win next season's Comeback Player of the Year award. So, hey, Good luck there, Russ. Now, finally, with the 2022 college football season coming to a close this Monday, we thought it would be super fun to see which states were the best and worst at betting on college football this year. The rankings are based on each state's collective winning percentage against the spread. And it looks like congratulations are in order for the state of Washington. So there you go, Washington. Well, Nebraska, well, Oh, Nebraska, back to the drawing board. We're sorry, but we do love you. So get all of that and so much more at Bet Online. Well, week 18 is finally upon us in the NFL. Here now to break down the biggest games with all of those playoff implications. Let's welcome Drew Butler, Anthony Beck, and Jonathan Casillas. Hey, guys. Hey, Allie, back once again. I cannot believe where the time has gone. It is the last week of the NFL regular season. Drew Butler here, joined alongside my guys, Anthony Beck and Jonathan Casillas, to break down all of the action, which has a ton of playoff implications. And if you know anything about the last week of the regular season in the NFL, you know, of course, it's the hardest weekend to handicap. That's why you're right here on Bet Online All Access. Guys, we got some Saturday action coming up this weekend. We'll start in the AFC South, and this is a playoff game. The Tennessee Titans at the Jacksonville Jaguars Saturday night, 8.15 p.m. Eastern. Winner wins the AFC South and gets a home playoff game. Anthony, the Jaguars are six and a half point favorites right now, and the total here is 40 points. Yeah, big number, right? I mean, think about it. The magnitude of this game and the experience that the Titans have in these certain situations versus Jacksonville, who's new to all this within the last, you know, several years since they had a success many years ago. Uh, it's been a great season for the Jacksonville Jaguars. I think Trevor Lawrence right now is playing such a good brand of football. The instability at the quarterback position right now for the Tennessee Titans, just trying to, you know, get as much positive play out of their young player is, is really hard. You know, a Tannehill injury and, and uh, you know, just trying to get Malik Willis to, you know, to thrive early. It's just, it's tough versus the defenses right now that they're playing. I just think it's going to be way too much. I actually think... The Jacksonville Jaguars will cover this number at home. I don't think it's going to be as close as maybe people want it to be. And I'm going to trust these guys out West. They know what they're talking about. They see Jacksonville as the dominant team. I'm going to roll with them. Yeah, there's no such thing as a sucker line, really. Like you said, they know what they're doing. And Jonathan, the Jaguars have won four straight. The Titans have lost six straight. Can you believe you can lose six to end a season, but win the last weekend and win the division? 
Yeah, and that's where they sit. They sit right now to, you know, to beat a team who's, you know, surging right now in the Jacksonville Jaguars. But if they beat them, the Titans are in. It's crazy how this thing works. But look, I think I think Jacksonville is just a little bit too good right now. And like I said, they're trending upward right now. They're playing really good football. That momentum will help them carry them into the playoffs. Like Anthony said, Trevor Lawrence is a stud. You know, he was definitely worth that pick. You know, and then Etienne, he's a guy that's playing really good football right now. And then, and then how about my boy Evan Ingram, former Giant? has a resurgent career. Yeah. I just think Jacksonville will be a little too much to handle, so I'll lay the points to take Jacksonville. Yeah, we're all on the same side here. Nothing that the Titans have shown over the last month would tell me that they can win this game or really even cover the number, especially it all starts at the quarterback position. It seems like Josh Dobbs is probably going to start in Week 18. Yes, I'm sure Derrick Henry will be back in the lineup, but remember, four weeks ago in Week 14, the Jaguars dominated the Titans 36-22. to Now they're laying less than a touchdown at home Saturday night football in Jacksonville Jacksonville is where playoff dreams go to die in week 18 remember what happened last year when the Colts were red hot and needed a win to get in I'll roll with you guys I'll lay the six and a half with the Jags they should win the AFC South let's head to the NFC East as the Dallas Cowboys head up north to take on the Washington Commanders. This game's Sunday afternoon. Anthony, right now, the Cowboys are five-and-a-half-point favorites. The total is 41, and there are a lot of moving parts here for playoff seeding, depending on what the Cowboys do. Yeah, you got to think right now the Commanders really put a dagger in their back, obviously not being able to really play for anything in this game. Made a valiant effort, but just weren't ended up being good enough to really make those plays to get them in a situation where this game actually mattered for them. For Dallas, though, you're right. I mean, you're talking about potential number one seed. You're talking about potential uh, winning the division and also securing their spot. And I think when you look at this game and this matchup, where they're trying to be moving forward in the playoffs or really in a magnitude game like this where they should dominate, I think that this is an example for them to go out there and really show where they are at this point in the season. I like the Cowboys here. I think they cover that number. Yeah, Jonathan, put your Giants bias aside here for a second, okay? If the Cowboys win the NFC East, they get that home playoff game. Do you think that's a good thing for Dallas? Or is that so much pressure on Mike McCarthy, Dak Prescott, and the boys that they could again crumble in the first round of the playoffs? Look, I'm not going to talk about what they're going to do in the playoffs. I'll just talk about a little bit what they need to do to get in. And they definitely need this win, I feel like, to go ahead and secure that spot. But then also they need the Giants to beat Philly to yeah. go ahead and move up to that, to that, uh, to win the division. And then if the Niners lose, they can get the number one seed. Crazy. Like, I, I don't know how that's even possible, but it is. And, and that's what they're playing for. This is a very talented team. C.D. Lamb, one of the better receivers in the league, has been on a tear three games over 100 yards, just really putting it together, being a dominant a, a dominant guy on that side. And the commanders kind of lost their way a little bit. During the middle of the season, they were, they were a team you didn't really want to face. Your defense, led by Deron Payne and Jonathan Allen, did a tremendous job the entire year, but just not enough offense. Uh, Taylor Heineke's been up and down. Whoever played quarterback for them has been up and down, and they just never really found that consistency. And I think the Cowboys are just too talented. Do I want to take the points? Uh, I mean, I'm a later points. I got to go with the Cowboys. And I just think they're so much more talented and they're playing for a lot more than the Commanders. Yeah, a lot more talented than the Commanders and they're playing for so much more. I'll lay the five and a half points with you guys here as well. Let's round things up with some Sunday night football in the NFC North. And I cannot believe what I'm about to say, but Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers control their own destiny. The Detroit Lions head to Lambeau to take on the Packers. The Packers are four and a half point favorites, Anthony, and the total is 49 and a half points. Yeah, you know, it's interesting in this one, uh, you know, Lions a lot of get, getting a lot of celebration from a lot of folks on how well they're playing. You know, I watched them against the Jets and I really wasn't impressed in, in, in a win uh, on the road. Uh, you know, this is a team that obviously has a lot of grit. Campbell's done a great job. Uh, they've reeled off a lot of wins here on the back end of the season after a poor start. Really incredible to have that mental focus to get through the season when such a poor record early on to get where they're at. But man, I'll tell you what, I am not betting against Aaron Rodgers <laughs> the final week of the season. Uh, I'm gonna take the Packers, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lay those points and I think they're gonna be uh, in the playoffs, if we can believe that. Brady, Aaron Rodgers, all wow. the ups and downs, they will be in the playoffs. Will that be a problem for some teams? You never know. Experience means a lot in these situations and they got it. 
Yeah, it certainly does. And the Packers win. They're in. This game, obviously, is Sunday Night Football, Jonathan. If the Rams beat the Seahawks earlier on Sunday, then if the Lions win, they're in. They'll know that before kickoff. Yeah, look, the Lions have done a tremendous job this year, starting off one and six to start the season. That's yeah. like beyond dead. You know, like there nobody gave them anything, but then they started to surge, you know, big win in here. I watched that game against the Giants, and that's when I was like, oh, this is a lot more talented team than I've realized, and probably everybody else realized. But then they're going into Green Bay and facing one of the GOATs in Aaron Rodgers. You know, they're one four in a row, and Aaron Rodgers looks like he's got control of this team, and these wide receivers are making a lot of plays for him. But look, I think this is this is going to be a tough game. The Lions can score a lot of points, even though I know Zaire Alexander and, 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 um, and those guys did a good job against the Vikings last week in the Packers. I think the Lions can score some points against this team, so they're going to keep it close. I take the points. Don't know if they're going to win. Take the points, and I go with the Lions. Yeah, this is going to be a fascinating matchup. I would love to be in that pregame locker room to hear what Dan Campbell's going to say to get the boys ready to take on Aaron Rodgers and the Packers with the playoffs on the line inside Lambeau Field. Don't forget the Lions beat the Packers earlier on in the season, 15 to nine. What the Packers did, though, a week ago against the Vikings, of course, I was on the Vikings. Uh, that could be cause for concern. Aaron Rodgers and this Packers offense is heating up, but that defense always seems to rear its ugly head at the worst times possible for the Green Bay Packers. I would expect this. Seahawks lose. Lions know what they're playing for heading into Sunday Night Football. I'll roll with Dan Campbell and the boys from Motown. Give me the Lions plus four and a half. Sprinkle something on the money line as well. I think the Lions get this victory outright Sunday night in Lambeau. It's sure to be an amazing weekend of NFL action. The playoffs are already here. They officially begin next week, so be sure to check back in right here on Bet Online All Access. For Anthony Becht and Jonathan Casillas, I'm Drew Butler. Allie, back to you. Awesome. Thanks, fellas. Well, great insight as always. And as per usual, I for one cannot wait for all of the football action this weekend. Well, that wraps it up for this edition of Bet Online All Access. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to like, share, subscribe, and drop us a line. We'd love to hear from you. Bet Online, where the game starts.